Bonjour Anédis, bienvenue à notre cours de français. Pour commencer, écrivez la date, vendredi 5 juin 2020, et écrivez le titre 9.1F, la journée scolaire, qui veut dire the school day. Okay, so after you've written the date and the title, if you would like to include the page number of the book in there, do so, for easy reference. Um, we are going to start on the new theme, which is theme three. Remember the GCSE specification is divided into three themes. Uh, we have now completed theme one, and we do theme three in year 10, and theme, uh, well, the remainder of theme three in year 11, and the longer theme, theme two, in year 11. Okay, so what we're going to start is this, all, this theme is about school, future study, and employment after study. So we're going to start with the topic of the school day, which should be revision for most of you from Key Stage 3. So hopefully not too difficult. Alors, notre premier objectif, c'est de décrire une journée scolaire. Et notre objectif de grammaire, c'est de réviser le passé composé avec les verbes ER réguliers. Alors, pour commencer, écoutez et lisez le vocabulaire à la page 156. Maintenant, je vais lire le texte d'Henri qui décrit son premier jour à l'école. Dimanche soir, mes parents m'ont aidé à préparer mes affaires. Le lendemain matin, mon père m'a emmené au collège en voiture parce que c'est assez loin. J'ai retrouvé mes copains quelque part dans la cour. Le principal nous a appelés chacun notre tour pour nous indiquer notre classe. Arthur et Thomas étaient dans la même classe que moi et j'ai sauté de joie. Dans la salle de classe, notre professeur principal avait notre emploi du temps et on a visité les bâtiments. Les cours ont commencé à 8h30. Moi, j'ai passé une heure dans, la, dans le gymnase et une heure dans les labos. À la récréation, j'ai retrouvé mes copains et j'ai joué au foot avec eux dans la cour. Ensuite, j'ai rencontré mon prof d'anglais, qui lui est très sympa. À midi, c'était l'heure de manger. Maintenant, ce n'est pas plus la cantine comme à l'école primaire, mais le self. Moi, je préfère le self, car il y a plusieurs choix de desserts et d'entrées. L'après-midi, j'ai accompagné mes copains au cours de maths, d'histoire géo et de musique. Enfin, ça a sonné à 16 heures. Quelle journée fatigante J'ai changé de salle de classe six fois. Mon cartable était très lourd et mes professeurs, quant à eux, ne se sont pas rappelés mon prénom. Mais pour moi, le collège est fabuleux. Cela me fait penser à une immense maison avec beaucoup d'habitants à l'intérieur. Ok, so now we've read through the text, we need to decide whether the statements in English below the text are true, false or not mentioned. Okay, so all you need to do is put one of those by each of those statements. Now the first one we're going to do together, Henry walked to school. So generally, these statements follow the order of the text. So you're not going to be looking at the end of the text for the answer to the first statement. You work your way through the text and that's how the statements will always fall. Okay, so let's have a look. Dimanche soir, mes parents m'ont aidé à préparer mes affaires. That says nothing about going to school. Le lendemain matin, the next day in the morning, mon père m'a emmené au collège en voiture. Okay, so the next day, mon père m'a emmené. My dad took me to school en voiture. Now, even if you didn't know what m'a emmené meant, you can see that au collège, au collège means to school, and you know already that en voiture means by car. So you can pretty much work out the answer. So what I want you to do, so here we're going to highlight the bit of the text that gives us the answer and then write false by the statement. 
If you have the book, you can do this in the book. You can take a picture of what you've done in the book and send me. If you don't have the book, I'd like you to write false and then write out the support meant the supporting statement in your um, in your book so that you have it there to show why you have why and how you came by that answer. So our grammar objective is to revise the perfect tense of regular ER verbs. You were introduced to the perfect tense at the end of year 9 um, and we looked at it again um, at the beginning of year 10 um, in a lot more detail. Um, so we went over the perfect tense completely but today we're just going to focus on regular ER verbs which take avoir as an auxiliary. Okay, um, so first of all why do we call it the perfect tense and why is it called le passé composé in French? So, um, as I've probably explained to you before, a good way of remembering this is perfect tense is that these are perfect completed actions. Okay, there are actions that taken past just one taken place in the past just one time. They had a start um, and an end. They're completed actions, one-off actions. Okay. Now, it's the passé composé in French because it's composed, the composé means composed, um, the composed past of three things. They are the subject pronoun, the auxiliary verb, and the past participle. So subject pronoun examples, I, you, he, she, you, we, and they. Um, obviously, a subject pronoun could be replaced by someone's name, um, or you could be saying my sister, my dad, for example. Um, and then the middle bit of the perfect tense sandwich, if you like, because it's always got three parts, is the auxiliary verb. And the auxiliary verb we're going to be practicing today is avoir. Um, and then the past participle, um, which is fixed, is um, for ER verbs. It's very simple. You remove the ER and you replace it with an E acute. So the first thing we need to make sure we are clear on is the conjugation of the verb avoir in the present tense because this is the auxiliary verb in the perfect tense, uh, the perfect tense which is the past tense. Okay, a bit like in English when you say I have eaten or you have played. Now in English it doesn't change much, I have, you have, he has, we have, they have, but in French obviously those conjugations change more regularly. So to recap the verb avoir, um, if you don't know it already, please do learn this and make sure you know it because it obviously is a very important verb in its own right, but you will need it to form the past tense. And even at foundation level in French, you do need to show that you can use the past tense. So, j'ai, I have, tu as, you have, il, elle, on a, we have, nous avons, we have, Vous avez, you plural have, or you polite have, et ils, elles ont, they have. Okay, now I've dug out a couple of videos to help you memorize the verb if you're struggling. Um, so do follow these links and go on to YouTube um, to get some help with that. So now I'd like you to have a go at the interactive activity on Caboodle, um, practicing the perfect tense of regular ER verbs. Um, to do this, as I've instructed in the star shape here, you need to click on the Resources tab on page 146 of the Digibook. Okay, what you will find when you get there, and this will mark it for you at the end, um, that's why these are very useful exercises, um, you just need, you're going to have a choice of three um, past participles, and you need to choose the one that looks right. All I would say to remind you that remember if you're dealing with ER verbs and they're regular, the past participle is going to be formed by taking off the ER at the end of the infinitive and replacing it with an E acute accent. Okay, so for example, if that first verb was j'ai, let's imagine, visité, it's going to be uh, visité is the infinitive with an ER on the end, but j'ai visité, even though it sounds the same as the infinitive, 
it does not look the same. If it's a past participle and it's an ER verb, it's going to end in the E acute accent, not an ER. Okay, Okay. so have a go at that. Just pause, uh, go on to Kabuda now and pause this slide and come back when you're finished. Maintenant, vous devez réécrire les phrases suivantes en utilisant le passé composé. So, je travaille dur au collège. This is in the present tense. This means I work hard at school. Okay? And all of these sentences are actually in the present tense. What you're doing is looking at the verb and putting that verb into the past tense. So, you're going to be saying, I worked hard hard at school. So for example, yesterday I worked hard at school. So the first one, just to show how we do that, the verb is travail um, and the infinitive is travailler. These are all ER verbs, so it's going to be easy to do them. So we go back to the infinitive, which has an ER on the end. Je travaille dur au collège. The verb is travailler. Um, so we know that that ER is going to be chopped off and replaced with an E acute. And then we need to remember that we also need a, an auxiliary verb. We need the avoir, even if we're not saying in English. If we're not saying I have worked hard, we're just saying I worked, it still needs the auxiliary verb in French. Okay, so the answer would be j'ai travaillé dur au collège. I want you to have a go at the others on your own and remember to use the appropriate conjugation of avoir depending on the subject pronoun or the subject that is being used. So for number two, it's mes copains, my friends, it's plural, okay? Think of which um, auxiliary verb you're going to need for that, okay? Please stop the slide here, write them down in your books, and when you've finished, um, resume. Maintenant, traduisez les phrases suivantes en utilisant le passé composé. So what you are going to do here is translate the sentences, five sentences in English, into French. Um, in the orange box, you have a list of infinitives to help you with this task. The first thing you need to do in each sentence is to identify the verb, and that is what you are going to be changing from the present to the perfect tense, the past tense. Okay, um, the verb always follows the subject in the sentence. So, for example, number one, I am the subject, and the verb comes straight after, I found. Okay, um, number two, she is the subject, and the verb comes straight afterwards, she closed. Now, um, all you need to, even though we have one verb in the past tense in English, you need to remember that you will have two parts of the verb in French. Okay. So remember our three-part equation for the perfect tense, the subject pronoun plus two verbs, the auxiliary verb and the past participle. Okay, so I found, we're going to look in the box, the verb to find is trouvé. So what we are saying is I have found. So je plus avoir, j'ai plus the past participle, we take the infinitive, remove the er and replace it with an e acute, trouvé. Maintenant, vous allez faire un exercice d'écoute. Okay, so you're going to be listening to Cecile's account of a school trip. Um, and as the questions are in English, you are going to be answering the questions in English. And before you listen, do uh, have a quick read through the questions. And as you normally would do, try to anticipate some of the language that's going to come up. How might they say these things? How might this information be presented? Think about that in that time. Um, uh, to access the audio, you need to click on the resources tab at the bottom of the page, the double spread. Okay, there you will find it. Bon chance. Alors, euh, finalement, vous allez décrire euh, votre premier jour à l'école euh, utilisant les cinq verbes euh, ici. So, you're going to write a very short description, 40 words, which is about a sentence um, for each of these verbal phrases 
um, just describing your first day at school. Okay, so you don't need to come up with much of the language here because you've been given j'ai trouvé, I found, j'ai remarqué, I noticed, j'ai rencontré, I met, j'ai mangé, I ate, j'ai aimé, I liked. Okay, so you're really practicing these regular ER verbs in the perfect tense with this activity. Um, only 40 words, honestly, it's, it's not much at all. If you want to use the text and activity as a model to adapt your own descriptions, you can. Um, obviously, feel free to might write more than 40 words if you'd like to, but remember you have the writing um, worksheet to go on to after this, okay? Um, if you can include an extra opinion using city, it was, that would be good, and try not to repeat the same words, so use a variety of vocabulary. Okay. So now we've finished the exercises on this double spread um, of the book. You are going to have a go at completing 9.1 and writing worksheet, which I've attached to the homework. Um, this is an example of a foundation GCSE writing paper. Uh, and I'm going to go through the next slides with you uh, to prepare you for completing the worksheet. Um, just bear in mind that for the assessment, you're not going to be doing a foundation writing task. You are going to be doing a um, higher writing task. So the four bullet point task in the exam, um, your assessment, is going to be longer than the one here. It's going to be 90 words rather than 40 words. So the first task you would have on the foundation paper is a simple exercise. You have a photograph and you need to write four very short sentences um, underneath the photograph to describe what you see. So the best way to approach this task is um, to ask yourself who is in the picture, where are they, what are they doing, and for example, how many people are there? Um, you can talk about other things, and the demands on what you write are not very high. So, for example, what might you say to describe this photo? So very useful phrases. Um, for, so the first two phrases are really useful for any photograph that you would describe. Je vois, I can see, or I see. Il y a, there is or there are. And obviously um, this doubles up for your photo card and your speaking exam. You can use these phrases, je vois, il y a. Okay. Um, in relation to what they're doing, we say jouer au basket. So you would obviously have to conjugate that verb to say they are playing basketball. Yeah. Um, or you could say, it is a basketball team. Yeah, une équipe de basket. You just have to add it is, and I, I will put it at the beginning. Um, où, where are they? They are in a sports hall. Okay, so you'd have to add the they are at the beginning. And what, how do they seem? They are happy. Okay, so you'd have to add the they are, remembering they're all girls, at the beginning of that. So have a go at that and see what you come up with. You don't have to stick to those phrases. You can write anything you want, just four short sentences. Now the second task, um, uh, you will have, as you're going to have in the exam, for a similar task, but it'll be slightly longer in your assessment, you have um, a situation that is described um, in this in the Compton Blue colour. Tu as écrit à ton ami français pour décrire une journée typique au collège. Écrit environ 40 mots en français. So you're writing to your French friend to describe a typical day at school. Okay, write about 40 words. Now, in the foundation paper, this doesn't exist in the higher paper because this is a 90 word task in the higher paper. Um, you need to make sure um, that you fully understand the four bullet points before you write about them because most of your marks are going to be um, centered on how relevant the information you've given is to the bullet points, okay? So really, really important is to know what you're talking about before you start writing. So, mention, mention, let's go through the bullet points. Comment tu vas au collège? How do you go to school? Okay, so we've already seen in the text, uh, mon papa, mon père m'a emmené au collège en voiture. My dad took me to school by car. Um, so you know how to say to go by car. 
obviously we wouldn't be able to use that phrase in the past tense, we'd have to put it in the present tense because this bullet point is saying, how do you go to school? They want to know how you go to school on a regular basis. So we're going to be using the present tense, I go to school. You might want to add a time phrase there. Every day I go to school or sometimes I go to school. En voiture, quelquefois à pied. Sometimes I walk, okay? Now the second bullet point. Ce que tu fais pendant la pause déjeuner. So what you do during the lunch break. La pause déjeuner. Okay, so you can use the verb they've given you. Ce que tu fais. What do you do? You want to change that to I do. Je fais. Yeah, you could add anything under the end of there. You could have another verb. You could use any other verb if you wanted to. But you need to make sure it's in the first person because you're talking, you're saying I, what I do. Okay. Numéro 3, the third bullet point is les heures de cours. So the time of the lessons. They want to know, um, look back in the text, for example, it says my time, my first lesson starts at this time, my last lesson ends at this time. That kind of information, but it has to rela relate to the time of the lessons, okay, or how long the lessons are. Um, numéro 4, the fourth bullet point, les activités le soir à la maison. So activities in the evening at home. So you're going to talk about here about what you do at home. Okay, now as this is a foundation task, it's all in the present tense. It's not asking you here to come up with other tenses. You will notice in your assessment um, that is coming up that the higher paper is a bit more demanding in this. It will have one bullet point might be requiring a present tense answer. One of the other bullet points might be looking for a past task, past tense answer by using the word récemment, recently, which indicates that something you've already done. Or it might be looking for something in the future tense. So you need to be more tense aware for that. Okay, so um, it's not very long, only 40 words. Don't go overboard with this because there's a longer task after. And the main thing is that you communicate clearly and that you have answered those bullet points. So the third activity on the foundation writing paper would be to translate some very short sentences um, into French. Okay, so as we approach this earlier, um, I suggest you break the sentences up to translate them. Okay, so you can see in the bottom right hand corner here, uh, my French teacher, so my French teacher, would be one chunk, is, next chunk, very, next chunk, young. Okay, so you look at those individual words and if you don't know a word, you can just miss it out, but don't let that stop you from doing the rest of the sentence. Now, you can see um, that the translation is assessed for, and this is the same when you do a short translation in the higher paper, you are given marks for conveying key messages and application of grammatical knowledge of language and structures. So what they really want to know is, they, they're not going to say, they're not going to mark per word, they're just generally going to look at how many messages were conveyed. So to get full marks, all the messages were clearly conveyed. Um, four out of five, nearly all the messages are, you know, you get across. So you just do as best you can with that task. Have a go. So this is the final activity on the foundation writing paper where you have to write uh, around 90 words in French on two bullet points. So it's really, really important as there are only two bullet points um, that you understand what they want you to be writing about because a lot of your marks are to do with how relevant um, what you've written is. Okay, so um, uh, on, in, in the box on the right you can see what you need, to, what you should be aiming for. So for top marks, um, as we've already said, you need to answer the bullet points clearly, you need to give enough information, express opinions, use three time frames, um, attempt complex structures, I use a variety of vocabulary. Um, so uh, you can choose either A or B. So A, tu parles de tes matières scolaires pour ton blog. You're talking about your school subjects for your blog. Décris, describe, les matières que tu aimes et n'aimes pas et pourquoi. So talk about the subjects that you like and don't like and why. Une leçon intéressante que tu as aimé and an interesting lesson that you liked. So the second bullet point is clearly 
asking you to use the past tense, a lesson that you liked. And the first bullet point is asking you to use the present tense because it's talking about subjects you like and don't like and why, so generally speaking. B. Tu décris les activités extrascolaires à l'école pour ton blog. So you're describing extracurricular activities at school for your blog. Décris, describe, les activités possibles et ton opinion de ces activités. So describe the possible activities, that, that's all things you can do, um, et ton opinion de ces activités, and your opinion about these activities. Et une activité intéressante que tu as faite dans le passé. So, and an interesting activity that you have done in the past. Again, they are inviting you to use the past tense. Now, as you need three time frames to be able to access the highest grade boundary in the foundation paper, even though they haven't asked you for anything in the future tense or conditional, it would be wise uh, to add that in so that you have access. So when you do your assessment, um, be very aware of this. Make sure you've got three tenses. Um, and also, just, just even if they haven't asked for it in the bullet points, which they usually do in the higher paper, um, make sure that you add it in so that you have got examples of all three time frames. Okay, so have a go and send me in all your work. Um, so this, this writing sheet, I would like you to submit that for marking before next Friday. Um, sorry, by next Friday, just submit that for marking and the other activities I would like to see just corrected versions of um, after I've sent the corrections on a PowerPoint so you can correct them yourselves, take a picture and then send me that work in. Um, there are some, there is a one writing task on that that I will have to see so if you just correct your work and send it all in to me then I can correct the last task where you describe your first day at school, I'll do that individually. Okay, um, well done, year 10. Uh, uh, hopefully this is not too difficult and please do contact me if you're having any problems at all. Okay, bye-bye.